Hi Brewers, welcome back to part two of how to pressure transfer with your snub nose from Minnesaurus. So I'm Daniel with MCH Australia Keg King and I'm gonna show you quickly just how we can transfer things with the floating dip tube in the Fermentosaurus snub nose. So this is over here, the snub nose Fermentosaurus. So the snub nose is full of a porter beer that we've fermented already. Uh, it's finished and it's carbonated and we're now gonna move it into kegs. We could move it into another snub nose Fermentosaurus and we're gonna have a small portion of it left which means we can put it into a small keg as well. And with that, I think we're gonna do some wood chips and let it age a little bit with the small amount that we're gonna have left. The smaller headspace in the second keg is gonna allow us to be able to purge a little bit easier with a little less gas and leave the uh, porter in contact with some uh, wood chips that we're soaking right now in some kind of cheap bourbon, but it's gonna taste amazing. So, um, your snub nose fermentosaurus has been in here. It's been under pressure with the gas lines that came with the fridge but we've set it at about 10 PSI. It's finished carbonating. Um, we've already taken a small sample of it, which is probably why I'm gonna mess up some of this video, and um, made sure that it was gassed to the uh, appropriate levels that we were looking for in our beer. So with this, I'm just gonna use this gas tank here, which is now set to 10. The Fermentosaurus snub nose has 10 PSI in the headspace. So we're gonna use a liquid to liquid line to go from the Fermentosaurus into a keg. Um, the keg has an adjustable pressure relief valve on it, and that adjustable pressure relief valve right now is reading 10. Um, because we've cleaned and sanitized the keg, then we put it in the refrigerator for about an hour or so to get it cold, and so we've evacuated the sanitizer out of it by pressure, leaving 10 PSI in the keg. So now we have a clean, sanitized keg that is uh, completely purged of air. So what we're gonna do now is, uh, move the liquid from liquid to liquid port, and we're gonna adjust the spunding valve on this just slightly to be able to get a lower pressure over here to move the beer across. So I'll show you how that works now. So we're gonna connect the disconnect, one on this liquid post, and one over on the liquid post for the keg. Now you really shouldn't get much beer moving at first, and it's the slower transfer at the beginning that's really important. Because when we're moving this over, if you move it too fast, it will foam. So you wanna make sure that the pressure is balanced between the two first, and then you just wanna kinda of slightly crack your valve so that it will go down maybe one to two PSI to start with. And just let it trickle in slowly so that it doesn't foam up. So as you can see now, we've got about a, uh, a liter of beer that's moved over. This was at zero to begin with, and now this is at one and it's reading and it's going up. We're not moving it very quickly at all. Um, with this first couple of liters, it's really important that you move it over slowly. This way it doesn't foam up and you don't wind up with tons of foam coming out of your uh, spunding valve towards the end of it. I'm just gonna allow that to fill slowly like this. And then once it's filled with maybe say four, maybe five liters worth of beer, at that point we can just crack it a little bit wider so that we're moving a little bit faster. Again, with the keg cold, the beer's not gonna foam up. So now we've filled the keg and I've just stopped the, um, the flow of the beer going into the keg by way of the liquid disconnect. Now I've stopped it a bit short, it's about 18.5. Uh, the reason I did that is just because I want a little bit of extra beer to show you something else that I can do when I'm moving the beer around like this. So we filled the 19 um, in the keg with about as much beer as we want to put in it right now. Uh, I'm leaving a little bit of extra that we have in the uh, snub nose to be able to put in something else and treat it a little bit differently too so we get two different flavor experiences out of the one beer. Um, so 9.5 liter keg is perfect for the last little remaining bit of beer that's in there. Uh, we can purge the headspace because we're, uh, we're well under 9.5 liters. Probably only have about four or five liters that we'll actually harvest from above the yeast bed with the floating dip tube. So we've um, actually cleaned and sanitized this keg earlier. Uh, what I'm going to do now though, just to show you, is I'm going to add to it some uh, oat chips 
that we've already put into a bag. Now this bag has been sanitized by sitting in um, kind of, a, well it's bourbon. <laughs> and uh, so the wood chip's gonna pick up the bourbon flavor. Uh, then we're gonna move the, a bit of the bourbon and the wood chips into this keg. So I'm gonna pull the pressure release on this keg. I could be wearing a glove for this, but I will try to now get this to fit in here. And then what I'm going to do, I'll put the lid back onto this. Again, we're going to do a pressure transfer. So the 9.5 liter keg has now been uh, gassed up to 10 PSI and we've purged the headspace with it. I'm going to go ahead and put this on there so we can do a nice pressurized closed transfer. So we'll take off the gas disconnect. I'm going to pop on the adjustable spunning valve. This is already, already closed. <laughs> already, already. And um, yeah, so that's sitting at 10 PSI. So we're now filling the 9.5 liter keg nice and slowly. Um, it's picking up through the floating dip tube. You can see where that layer of sediment is down at the base. Um, there'll be some other floating material kind of down near the bed. So we want to make sure that we're not going to pick up that stuff. So we'll leave a small layer on. That's about as much as I want to grab. I'll leave this little bit of extra beer at the bottom. Um, Cause that's actually a bit too close to the yeast bed and we'll probably just wind up transferring that over to the keg. So that's pretty much it. We've now take this off. Again, we've got carbonated beer that's been transferred into this keg. It's um, easy enough for us to grab the gas, charge it back up to 10 PSI, uh, put it back onto a tap system and either start serving it with the wood in contact with the beer or let it age um, in a nice cool environment for a while so that it picks up some of those flavors and we can try it later. So that's your pressurized transfer systems with the snub nose fermentosaurus going into kegs, um, be it 19 or 9.5 or 50 or even another snub nose. It's just a simple matter of balancing the pressure in the snub nose with the keg, um, making sure that the keg is cold, clean, sanitized, of course, and uh, making sure that that first bit of the transfer is really nice and slow so that we don't break foam out of it. Um, out of the beer when we're filling up the keg. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll make others in the future. Thanks so much. Bye